The RTX 4070 Ti Super, a GPU amongst a refresh lineup from Nvidia that many people were highly anticipating. I personally thought that the 4070 Super was going to be the more popular card from the bunch, but I know a bunch of people had their sights set on this card, and for fair reasons, given the specs we were presented with, many dubbed this card as the cheaper RTX 4080. Now that reviews are out and you can buy this card from retailers, did it live up to the expectations? Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Reviews for the RTX 4070 Ti Super hit the web a few days ago, and I wanted to make this video for you guys so that I can give you my thoughts on it, what I think about this card now that we have actual real world results available to us, and also because we had been discussing these cards so much on the channel lately. The main question on everyone's mind is whether or not the RTX 4070 Ti Super is worth buying. The RTX 4070 Super did land where I had expected it would. I wasn't really surprised with anything when it came to the reviews we saw for various models, nearly on par with the RTX 4070 Ti and neck and neck with the RTX 3090, the flagship GPU of the previous generation. As everyone was saying, probably the card we should have gotten at launch, but at least a year later, for the same price, there's a decent jump for a refresh. Now when it came to the RTX 4070 Ti Super, this was a GPU that many others were saying would be the most popular amongst the bunch, and one of the main reasons for that is because when we saw the specs, it was looking like a card that would be on the heels of an RTX 4080, and considering before the announcement of the 40 Super Series, you'd have to pay around $1,200 for that level of performance, so the idea seemed appealing to a lot of people that after a year for $400 less, you'll be able to attain that level of performance. The RTX 4070 Ti Super moves on from the smaller AD104 die to the larger AD103 die, the same one as the RTX 4080, and this results in a 10% increase in shaders, and along with that you do get a larger 16 gigabytes of memory buffer and a wider memory bus resulting in 33% more bandwidth. So if one was to take those increases into account, then theoretically you could be looking at around a 10% uplift, maybe perhaps more, give or take, and this was already discussed more in depth previously, but what I did overlook and I thought it wouldn't have made a difference was the L2 cache. The RTX 4080 has 64 megabytes of L2 cache, whereas the 4070 Ti Super still retains the lower 48 megabytes that the original 4070 Ti had. To be honest, I was actually under the impression the whole time that the L2 cache amount was also raised, considering they had moved on to the li larger die as well. Along with that, the 4070 Ti Super has a lower TDP, so it doesn't have the same large power envelope as the 4080 has. Unfortunately, when reviews came out, it turned out that the RTX 4070 Ti Super wasn't drastically faster than the RTX 4070 Ti non-Super, and it didn't come close to the RTX 4080 where many were hoping. The silver lining here is that if you wanted RTX 4080 performance or were waiting for it to drop in price or above, etc., well, at least it's just $200 more now as opposed to the $400 since the RTX 4080 Super comes in at a price drop from the original model at $1,000, but anyways, that's beside the point. In Tech Power Up's review of the RTX 4070 Ti Super Tough from ASUS, we can see that in many titles it wasn't that much faster than the original 4070 Ti, and not close enough to the 4080 where one could call it a cheaper version of that card. I mean, in most cases, the difference between it and the 4070 Ti, you wouldn't really be able to notice that, and in some cases I might even argue that perhaps you could save some money and go for the 4070 Ti's that are on clearance now. I don't know, something to think about. At 4K, overall, we did see a 10% uplift on average, which kind of falls in line with our prediction, but at 4K, you since we're so GPU bound, you're going to be seeing more one-to-one -one scaling with the shader increase, but I think there will be more people at 1440p with this card than 4K. Also, in many cases, the RX 7900 XT does come out ahead of this GPU. You also get more VRAM and an overall better memory configuration. Prior to reviews, I said that if this card will be close to the original 4080, then the 7 7900 XT, even with its recent price drop, would be a bit of a tough sell, because performance overall would be better, and then you get all the NVIDIA features and support along with it. However, that's not the case here. We see that the cards are trading blows with each other, so if you don't really care about those NVIDIA features, and you're not too big on ray tracing, then the 7900 XT does look appealing, and with that said, the 7900 XT's ray tracing isn't atrocious. I mean, you can still play many games with it enabled, and, you know, FSR does help, 
It's just that it doesn't compete with its direct NVIDIA counterpart like it did in rasterization. But again, you do save money, so the choice is really up to you, whichever one's more important to you. Now, the card has hit store shelves, so if you were interested in buying it, then you can definitely do so. I was looking at stock on Newegg, and there's a couple models that are available at MSRP. I personally wouldn't pay anything higher than that. Now, on a side note, I saw Steve in his review mentioned that there was an issue with the MSI Ventus model he was using for testing. Apparently, it was underperforming compared to some of the other AIB models, and this was confirmed by by NVIDIA and MSI, which I think was addressed with a vBIOS update later on. So something to watch out for. The nice thing about Tech Power Up is they review many models on their site so you can see how they do and how they perform when it comes to things like thermals. I was talking to some local contacts I have which have ties to retail and distribution here locally in Canada and they haven't seen much movement of this GPU in terms of initial sales. I mean for a refresh, you typically aren't expecting a boatload of sales anyways. But even considering that, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of interest in this model, which makes sense given what we have just looked at in terms of performance and it not meeting expectations. But also if we're to take into account Nvidia's release cycles for a new generation, then we should see the RTX 50 series come out later this year. And if those delay rumors are true, then maybe Q1 2025, which really wouldn't be that big of a deal. So I think most people are in this mindset that, you know what, I've already waited this long, I can just wait another year and get by with compromising on settings or just playing older dig games, whatever it is that you want to do to help you bide your time, and then just wait for the 50 series. Now, interestingly, I was reading comments on hardware forums, YouTube reviews. I saw people who were discussing their disappointment with this card, and their reaction to it was that since this GPU didn't meet their performance expectations, they said, screw that, I'll just pay the extra $200 and get the 4080 Super now and call it a day. I think those people are in the boat where they are kind of looking for a new GPU right now, and their current one just can't hold them over. Very peculiar, and it makes you think that perhaps this was set up deliberately in a way to maybe upsell people. Where have we seen that before, I wonder? Along with that, for the time being, until the 50 series is announced, the RTX 4080 Super will now be NVIDIA's main top gaming GPU for a while. The RTX 4090, because of the China situation and AI, is just too expensive. Stock for the card looks like it's starting to come back, whereas before I saw there were only like two CUs available. And eventually, price will return back to normal for the 4090, but I think by the time that happens, you will definitely not want to buy it because it won't be too far off from the 50 series. But for now, the 4080 Super becomes Nvidia's go-to gaming card for the high-end segment at a quote-unquote sensible price. All in all, I don't think anyone was really expecting these Super cards to shake up the market too much, and if they were, they were only diluting themselves. I think this launch still allows Nvidia to achieve their objective from a marketing standpoint just to get the new cycle going again until we enter another quiet period, so to speak, and then follow that up again with the 50 series which of course will be the larger jump. Now, whether the 50 series will be a generation worth waiting for, I don't know. At this point, everything's still up in the air. We just don't have any information, or barely any information that is. But if you guys are curious and want to stay up to date with all of that, then make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the upcoming content. Alrighty guys, so that will do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.